the NCAA, Duke's Danny Ferry was bloodied but unbowed. His prayer fell on deaf ears, and North Carolina is the Atlantic Coast Conference champion. In New York, a Georgetown freshman left Syracuse in mourning. John Thompson's Hoyas made it official as the Beast of the East. And Alabama's Keith Askins had Florida asking for trouble with a pair of four-point plays that helped boost the Crimson Tide's win factor. Today, we're going to learn who will ride the road to the Final Four. Hello again, everyone. I'm Jim Nance, along with James Brown. And together, we're just minutes away right now from finding out the 64-team field for this year's NCAA championship. Billy Packer has made his way up from Madison Square Garden. We'll have his analysis of the seedings and pairings. But first, there are some conference tournaments still going on at the moment, James. All right, Jim, and these are conference tournament finals that will be completed after the announcement of the 64-team field. Let me bring you up today in the Pac-10 final. Arizona comfortably ahead of Stanford by the score of 50-32 late in the second half there. Big 8 final. Boy, I tell you, Oklahoma has not showed up for this tournament at all, trailing by 16 points to Missouri, that one late in the second half as well. Southwest Conference final shows Texas and Arkansas. Arkansas ahead 72-55. Both of those teams should definitely be in the field of 64. And in the Metro finals, Louisville and Florida State. Louisville on top, 57-49. to 64 teams. Who's going where? The committee in Kansas City has made its final decisions, and Tim Brandt will reveal them to us when the road to the Final Four continues right here on CBS. The NCAA Tournament Selection Show is sponsored by Pizza Hut, official corporate sponsor of the NCAA. Most personal computers are like a two-lane highway, which is fine, until there's so much information, even important data, gets stuck. But you can have more lanes for information in your system right now with an IBM invention called Microchannel in many IBM Personal System 2 computers. It's putting an end to roadblocks and speed limits, so you'll be going places faster today and down the road. When you're thinking ahead, you're thinking IBM Personal System 2. Astronomers tell us there won't be a total eclipse in America until the year 2017. They are very much mistaken. This is the year of the eclipse. Introducing the eclipse by Mitsubishi. Try not to stare. There's nothing more exciting than a fast break. To Pizza Hut for a great supreme deal, where exceptional leaping ability and blazing speed both come into play. In pursuit of Pizza Hut's Supreme Pizza, loaded with six mouth-watering toppings, now get one medium for $8.99, or better yet, two for just $4 more. And that's a deal worth running out for. Pizza Hut, making it great. Pacific Coast Network. The site is Kansas City. It's been the focal point of college basketball. It's the home of the NCAA, as we are now ready to announce the 64-team field for the 1989 tournament. And hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brandt. For the fifth straight year, the NCAA has 64 teams in this field, so there are no first-round buys. The teams are selected both competitively and geographically and then balanced as fairly as possible throughout the four regions. So we'll start in the east, and we'll tell you that these games are to be played in Providence, Rhode Island, Friday and Sunday, March 17th and 19th. The number one seed, as expected, Georgetown. The Hoyas make their 11th straight appearance. That's second only to North Carolina. They'd love to return to Seattle where they won the title in 1984. The Hoyas play Princeton. Pete Correll's seventh NCAA invitation. The number eight seed is Vanderbilt. C.M. Newton's last year before he moves on as the athletic director at Kentucky. And Vandy plays Notre Dame, a team without a senior on the roster. The fifth seed, NC State, is in. It's been a tumultuous season for Jim Valvano. Controversy, snowstorms, overtimes. The ACC regular season champions play South Carolina. It's the first bid for the Gamecocks since 1974. The number four seed is Iowa, led by B.J. Armstrong, Roy Marble, and Ed Horton. And they'll go against Rutgers. What a job by Bob Wenzel there. Continuing in the east, but moving to Greensboro, North Carolina, these games to be played Thursday and Saturday, March 16th and 18th. Kansas State, the 19th trip to the NCAA tournament, the most among Big 8 schools. And they'll play Minnesota. Stanford, 
It's the number three bid. It's the first bid since 1942 for the Cardinal, the only unbeaten team in the history of NCAA tournament play. The Cardinal, 3-0. They won the national championship and have not been back since 42. Siena hasn't played in front of fans in a month. The measles team, the 14th seed. West Virginia had a 22-game win streak earlier this year. The Mountaineers play Tennessee, and it's Tennessee's first invitation since 1983. Continuing in the East region, the number two seed is Duke. These games in Greensboro. Duke is led by Danny Ferry, staying close to home. The Blue Devils play South Carolina State, the number 15 seed. Now in the West region, Boise, Idaho. These games Thursday and Saturday, March 16th and 18th. And the number one seed, Arizona, the number one team in the nation led by Sean Elliott. The Wildcats go against Robert Morris. St. Mary's of California make their first appearance since 1959 as the number eight seed. They'll go against the Clemson Tigers out of the Atlantic Coast Conference. That's the fifth straight postseason tournament for Cliff Ellis. DePaul plays Memphis State. That game Thursday night, you can watch it at 11.30 Eastern time right here on CBS. Memphis State, DePaul. And the Running Rebels of UNLV, seven in a row for the Running Rebels in the NCAA tournament, go against Idaho. Idaho is 25 and five from the Big Sky Conference. These games to be played in Tucson, Arizona now, staying in the West, Friday, March 17th, and Sunday, March 19th, Oregon State, Coach Ralph Miller's final season will go against Evansville. Head coach Jim Cruz played on that Indiana team in 1976 that won the title. Seton Hall, congratulations to P.J. Carlissimo back in the tournament, but P.J. has to go back out west for the second year in a row. He'll play Southwest Missouri State. LSU goes against Texas El Paso. They'll play Friday night, 1130. You can watch that game also here on CBS beginning at 1130 Eastern time. And staying in the west, the number two seed is Indiana. These games in Tucson now. A marquee team in Tucson to replace the Arizona Wildcats, which cannot play on their home court. They'll go against George Mason, the Patriots' first bid ever to the tournament. And you watch out for Kenny Sanders. 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds for the George Mason Patriots. So we're halfway through the process. 32 teams out of the 64-team field. If your team has not been mentioned yet, then stay with us because when we come back, we've got the Midwest and the Southeast. We're halfway through the process. Stay with us. Exciting with Pizza Hut Pizza. With tons of toppings and two layers of cheese, it's a real crowd pleaser. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Pizza Hut, make it quick! Mercedes-Benz was obsessed with safety engineering long before it became fashionable. Perhaps that's why, in a recent insurance industry study of 207 cars, this S-Class Mercedes had the best overall safety record. Mercedes-Benz, engineered like no other car in the world. Welcome back to the Hyatt Regency Hotel. This is our studio headquarters where the selection process has been taking place this entire weekend. And we've announced now 32 of the 64 teams. So we'll go back to the boards and we'll start in the Midwest region. The Midwest games will be played Thursday and Saturday, March 16th and 18th in Indianapolis, Indiana. The number one seed there is Illinois, 19-0 when Kendall Gill is in the lineup. Illinois will play McNeese State, the Cowboys. That's their first bid ever. The number eight seed is Pittsburgh. The Panthers beat four top 10 teams this year, and they'll play Ball State, which is 27 and two. That's the best record in the entire NCAA. Arkansas, Nolan Richardson still looking for his first tournament win ever. He's 0-4 in the NCAA tournament, the number five seed, and will play Loyola Marymount, the highest scoring team in the nation. Louisville lost five of their last 10 games. Unusual for Denny Crum's team. They're usually peaking at this time of the year, tournament time. Louisville will go against Arkansas Little Rock, and this is the second appearance in four years for Arkansas Little Rock. Still in the Midwest, moving to Dallas. These games to be played Friday and Sunday, March 17th and 19th. 
Georgia Tech from the Atlantic Coast Conference, the sixth seed, will play Texas, the Longhorns' first bid since 1979. Missouri head coach Norm Stewart will not be back for the tournament. They're 6-4 and four under Rich Daly, but they are the number three seed and will go against Creighton. The Blue Jays have won 15 of the last 19 games. The Florida Gators won the SEC title for the first time in 55 years. Norm Sloan returns to the NCAA tournament for the third straight year. Colorado playing state from the Western Athletic Conference. Staying in the Midwest in Dallas. Again, these games Friday and Saturday. The second seed is Syracuse. This is Jim Beheim's 12th appearance. The Orange Men, which lost to Georgetown in the Big East title game this afternoon, plays Bucknell. Bucknell is out of the East Coast Conference. Moving to the Southeast region, these games to be played Thursday and Saturday, March 16th and 18th in Nashville, Tennessee. Oklahoma. It's a surprise in that the Sooners did not stay close to home. People had anticipated Oklahoma would play in Dallas. Not the case. Number one seed in the Southeast region to be played in Nashville and will go against East Tennessee State. First bid since 1968. The LaSalle Explorers will play Louisiana Tech, the number eight and nine seeds. The University of Virginia Cavaliers with Terry Holland in and out of the hospital this year. Went to the Final Four in 1984, the last time it was held in Seattle. They hope to get there again to Seattle again this year. We'll go against Providence. Congratulations to Rick Barnes, his first appearance into the NCAA tournament. Providence started 13-0 this year. Florida State is in. The Seminoles will go against Middle Tennessee State. Moving to Atlanta Friday and Sunday, March 17th and 19th at the Omni. The Alabama Crimson Tide will go against South Alabama. A lot of home fans at that game. The University of Michigan playing Xavier of Ohio, the number 14 seed. The UCLA Bruins, many thought on the fence, in as the seventh seed and will go against Iowa State. And the number two seed is North Carolina against the winner of the Southwestern Athletic Conference title game that'll be played tonight between Texas Southern and Southern University. So it's an either or situation. So looking at the board, some quick thoughts. The defending national champion, Kansas, on probation, unable to defend its title. And it's the first tournament in 10 years that the University of, or Kentucky University, rather, has not been in the field. So there you have it, the 64 teams for the 1989 tournament. When we come back, we'll have Cedric Dempsey with us, who is the chairperson of the Men's Selection Committee. He'll join us. We'll answer all the questions that you may have. Right now, let's go back to New York and Jim Nance. Jim? Tim, thank you. Folks, we're also going to go right through the brackets one more time so you have a chance to write them all down. We'll also talk about the pairings with our college basketball expert, Billy Packers. We continue on the road to the Final Four. There's nothing more exciting than a fast break to Pizza Hut, where exceptional leaping ability, blazing speed, quick inside moves, and dominant height all come into play, leading to that final magnificent two-handed stuff. Pizza Hut is the pizza worth running out for. Pizza Hut, making it great. This is the Jetta that Volkswagen built. This is the deal that moves the Jetta that Volkswagen built. This is the disclaimer that goes with the deal that moves the Jetta that Volkswagen built. These are the dealers who must show the disclaimer that goes with the deal that moves the Jetta that Volkswagen built. And these are the customers who are happy with the dealers who must show the disclaimer that goes with the deal that moves the Jetta that Volkswagen built. These offers also available on Golf, GTI, and Cabriolet. James Brown back here in New York, and the field of 64 is now set. And the man who had the responsibility of overseeing that is in Kansas City, along with Tim Brandt, Cedric Dempsey, head of the selection committee. Let's go back to Kansas City. All right, James, thank you very much. We are back in Kansas City. We've moved from one spot to the other. We've joined Cedric Dempsey now, who is the chairman of the selection committee. And said, just looking over those boards as quickly as we did and putting them up there, it looked uh, like Indiana moving to Tucson. Was that for marquee value because you did have to move your school, Arizona, out over to Boise? No, not at all, Tim. Uh, the difficult problem there, which is always the case, is when you have multiple teams from a conference, is to make sure that uh, in top seeds that you do not have a one, two, three, or four seed team in a particular region, and that you try to maintain some balance uh, in, in the regions uh, so that you have good 
equity of competition uh, in all four areas. It looks like the committee was very conscious of that too and where they put teams. I see where uh, Georgia Tech is in Dallas and you have Oklahoma and Nashville, so you did move them around. Uh, yes, we had to do that because of the uh, multiple numbers from certain conferences. Uh, we also tried to keep them as close to their geographic region as, as we could. And so sometimes they've moved from one, one area to another, but we've also looked at the venue where they would be playing, and in some cases, even though they're jumping regions, that they may be just as close to their home uh, city. Let's take a look at some of the teams that didn't make it, the teams that were on the wrong side of the fence. Why did Iowa State, for instance, 17 and 11 go over New Mexico, 20 and 10? Well, again, uh, there's a variety of factors that we consider. We look at, uh, we always talk about the strength of schedule. We look at how teams perform late in the year, and that was one of the problems with New Mexico. Uh, they did not play as well late in the year as they played earlier in the year. Uh, we will look for good wins, good losses. Uh, we'll look for bad losses. Uh, we, we try to uh, divide all of those variables down and uh, we did that with about the last 15 or 20 teams and dissected them what we thought very carefully in making that decision. Said, let's take a look at the conference breakdown. And while we're looking at that, did the 4 o'clock games affect the seedings in this tournament? It almost looked as if the tournament championship games went according to Hoyle. The teams that looked like they'd be in were in. Now, we were fortunate with that because in uh, most of the seeding bracket that we did, we had to put down SEC 1, SEC 2, ACC 1, ACC 2, and uh, that makes it more difficult for the committee to work on uh, the seeding process because uh, you might draw some cases from time to time that uh, we're not properly seeding by institution, but when we have to take in consideration the time factor that we have, it, it does make it extremely difficult. Right now, we're going to go back to New York. Billy Packer, my colleague, has some questions for you. Billy? Said in regard to the Illinois-Indiana situation, there have been a lot of talk about, of course, not letting teams have their, uh, their home court advantage, which uh, you fellows have taken care of. And then there was talk to say, how about an Indiana getting the Hoosier Dome? But obviously, they're not going to get that. My question to you is, they won the Big Ten, which does not have a postseason conference tournament. They were the champion of their league, and yet they get seated behind another team in their, their league, Illinois. What was the thinking there? Well, uh, the committee's responsibility is to nationally seed them uh, based upon what we would say is their overall performance during the year, Billy. And uh, the committee was very impressed with uh, the late surge of Illinois, in particular since Gill was back in, in the lineup for them, and they played very well. And on top of that, in head-to-head -head competition, they beat Indiana both times. Uh, Cedric, you touched on it lightly. What about New Mexico exactly? How did they get left out again this year? It seems like every year the Lobos are the odd team out. For the last six years, they have averaged 21 wins a season, yet have never gotten an NCAA bid during that span. Well, the selection process uh, annually is a, is a relative matter, and, and so we really have to compare each year team strengths against other teams. So it is difficult to, uh, we recognize the problem that they have been left out, but we do look at, at them on an annual basis, and I think it would be unfair and certainly not consistent with our charge if we look back and say we left them out last year, and though, so this year we are going to include them in the tournament. That is really not our charge, and uh, unfortunately they have been a, uh, strong contender for the uh, 64 field uh, for the past few years, but uh, have not have not been in the final selection process. Said when you get in uh, the situation of various conferences, the ACC leads with six, the SEC right along with two other conferences with uh, five representatives, but not one team is seated. They've gone throughout the course of this year without anybody uh, consistently in the top 20. Why did you feel there was such depth in the SEC? Uh, does it have anything to do with past performance in the tournament? Uh, not at all. It has nothing to do with past performance, but uh, uh, we did not feel that there was an SEC team uh, that had performed well enough to be in the top 16, but they had very good balance in, the, in, their, uh, in their conference this year. And so that is basically why they ended up with uh, a, a good number in the tournament, but not particularly high seeds. Cedric, uh, James Brown here in New York. Louisiana Tech uh, got in, and they're from a conference that uh, does not qualify uh, for automatic bid as of yet. Uh, what was your compelling argument to get them in this year versus maybe some other team from a conference that does have an automatic uh, qualifier? Well, in a sense, uh, Louisiana Tech came in uh, as an independent since they're not in a conference that does qualify, and they, they were entered into the tournament based upon their strength. Sid, just so I understand it, one more question about the Atlantic Coast Conference. Now, UNC knocked off Duke uh, today. You kept Duke in-state and moved North Carolina to Atlanta. What was the reasoning there? 
That was a very difficult uh, issue that the committee dealt with. Uh, we felt that if we moved, and at that time we were dealing with the ACC number one, ACC number two, Big East number one, Big East number two. Uh, the Big East number one was considered the number one seed. If we kept the ACC number one uh, in that same region, we felt that it would imbalance the uh, level of competition in the East region. So what we attempted to do, we had to, selected to move ACC one, which ended up being North Carolina, out of their region, but kept them as close to, to their home site as possible in Atlanta. All right, Sid. Thank you very much for all your help, and uh, good luck in the tournament. Thank you, Tim. Let's take it back to New York now, and Jim Nance. Jim? All right, Tim and Cedric, thank you very much. And as promised, we'll come back and go through it region by region, game by game, with Billy Packer as we continue on the road to the Final Four. SL Coupe Roadster. Is it the car you wanted above all others because of its mighty V8 power? Or its blend of quick reflexes and sumptuous comfort? Or its incredible workmanship and finish? Only one thing is certain. You will have the driving experience of your life finding out. There's nothing more exciting than a fast break. To Pizza Hut for a great supreme deal, where exceptional leaping ability and blazing speed both come into play in pursuit of Pizza Hut's Supreme Pizza, loaded with six mouth-watering toppings. Now get one medium for $8.99, or better yet, two for just $4 more. And that's a deal worth running out for. Pizza Hut, making it great. Earlier today, at halftime of our Big East Conference Championship game, we showed you the women's pairings. Now, here was one thing that was undecided at that point, the women's MAC final, Bowling Green with a big victory. And by virtue of this, Bowling Green is in and Arkansas is in the women's tournament. Toledo is out with this loss today. All right, let's go right back to the East now and check it out with Billy Packer. First of all, Thursday and Saturday combination in Greensboro. Let's begin there and take a look at that bracket, Billy. First of all, at Greensboro, the sixth seed is Kansas State against Minnesota out of the Big Ten. Stanford comes all the way from Palo Alto to the East Coast to face Siena, West Virginia, and Tennessee, and Duke is the two seed going against South Carolina State. Obviously, I think the most competitive game in that early round could be that West Virginia-Tennessee game. Tennessee is a team that's disappointed throughout the course of this year, but you know they have the talent to come back. West Virginia, uh, I'm sure, very disappointed in what happened in the Atlantic 10, but a very dangerous ball club there. And Kansas State, a, a thing, another team extremely solid in NCAA tournament play, a tough team to beat, and going up against a giant killer, Minnesota. All right, Billy. Also in the East at Providence, this will be a Friday-Sunday combination, first and second round. The top seed in the East is Georgetown, facing the Ivy League champion Princeton team, Vanderbilt and Notre Dame, North Carolina State, South Carolina, and Iowa against Rutgers. Well, you know, you often wonder how a team that seemed to be on a very good roll will, will come back after a very disappointing game, and that's North Carolina State. They're upset against Maryland. Uh, has to disappoint that club. I'll be anxious to see how they bounce back. Possible Georgetown-Notre uh, Dame matchup on the first weekend. Well, I'll tell you what. Petey Carell's club, now there's no way personnel-wise they can match up with Georgetown, but style-wise they will really frustrate the Hoyas at least early on in that ballgame. And they execute extremely well. They indeed. really do. Let's turn our attention out west, Billy, and first looking out in Boise, Thursday and Saturday combination there. No surprise, Arizona, of course, number one seed against Robert Morris. Tough matchup there for Robert Morris. St. Mary's of California, first time in 30 years. They're in against Clemson. Clemson travels out west. Memphis State, DePaul, excellent matchup there. Probably the most competitive. And UNLV in Idaho. Well, I think you hit it on the head, James, in regard to Memphis State to Paul. Memphis State, uh, you've got to give Larry Finch a great deal of credit the way he has brought that program back. Extremely solid. It's one of the quickest teams in the United States. Uh, I think a real solid dark horse club. And then the Friday-Sunday matchups in uh, Tucson, Arizona, Oregon State. Ralph Miller, of course, looking to go out on a good note with Evansville. Seton Hall, Southwest Missouri State. Number seven, UTEP taking on LSU. That'll be our Friday night game. And then Indiana, the second seed out in the West against George Mason from the Colonial Athletic Association. Two great guards going up against each other in that LSU-UTEP matchup. Uh, Seton Hall, as we know, a very dangerous team, but going against a team that's been a shocker in opening rounds in Southwest Missouri State. 
All right, we've been going through the brackets east-west because it'll be an east winner against a west winner in the national semifinals in Seattle on April the 1st. That means it'll be Midwest against Southeast in the other national semifinal. Let's check out now the Southeast region. First of all, in Nashville, the top seed, Oklahoma, against East Tennessee State, LaSalle and Louisiana Tech, Virginia against Providence, Florida State against Middle Tennessee State. And Billy, some could look at this and say Oklahoma looks like a very good shot at going all the way to that regional final if you just look at this bracket. I think it's a very tough regional there, and Oklahoma's got tired legs. I've been saying that for about the last 10 days or so. They did not play well in their conference tournament. Great matchup between two outstanding individual players, uh, Lionel Simmons and Randy White in that uh, LSU, I mean in that uh, LaSalle game against Louisiana Tech. Virginia, a team that made it to the Final Four the last time it was in Seattle. That'd be a big charge for Terry Holland this time. Also in the southeast, let's go to the other region. That side is at Atlanta. And, you know, we've got a couple of interesting geographical matchups. First of all, we saw North Carolina State, South Carolina out in the east. How about Alabama, South Alabama will square off in the tournament. Michigan, Xavier, UCLA, Iowa State, and North Carolina against the winner of this game tonight, Southern versus Texas Southern. But potentially we're looking at a North Carolina-UCLA matchup next weekend, Billy. Well, those two teams in the last few years have played against each other, North Carolina getting the better of it, and then we had that huge upset, what, a year or so ago when UCLA beat them on their home court. I think a Xavier team is kind of interesting. You know, last year we all talked about Xavier being a team that could, could really make a nice run. They lost their players, but they have some fellas back right now. Could be a very interesting team opening round. And it could be North Carolina against Michigan uh, in the Sweet 16. We've seen that before. <laughs> last two years, it could be the third year in a row. How about the Midwest, J.D.? Really, as we swing our attention to the Midwest, i got to believe this is the toughest region in the country right now. Take a look, number one, Illinois. This is the Thursday, Saturday uh, competitions out in Indy. Illinois, McNeese State. Pittsburgh from the Big East will be playing Ball State with the best record in the NCAA at 27-2. Nolan Richardson's Arkansas squad, number five against Loyola Marymount. Louisville struggled the last third of the season. Boy, Denny Crum has not had a team struggling this late in the season in a long time playing Arkansas Little Rock. Not a bad team in that lineup right there, and I agree with you, James. I think it's by far the toughest region. Uh, Arkansas Little Rock, a solid club. Arkansas playing extremely well, dominating their league right now. And, of course, everybody has been talking about how Illinois has come on with a rush at the end. A very strong region in Minneapolis. And then Friday, Sunday in Dallas, Georgia Tech, the number six seed against uh, Texas. Tom Penders getting the Longhorns in, and his first year's head coach there. Missouri, the third seed, playing Creighton, Florida, from the um, SEC against Colorado State. Syracuse, the number two seed out there, playing Bucknell. You know, when you look at that region, as you said, you take all four of those seeds. At one time through the course of the season, you could have envisioned any one of those four teams being a number one seed. So when you start talking about Illinois, Syracuse, Missouri, Louisville, strong, strong competition. All right, Billy. James, let me set the lineup now here on CBS. First of all, tonight on CBS, we have 60 Minutes, followed by Murder, She Wrote, and the CBS special, The People's Choice Awards. The tournament gets underway for us on Thursday night with a game between DePaul and Memphis State. That's at 11.30 Eastern time, and that's a game coming from Boise, Idaho. From Tucson on Friday night at 11.30 Eastern time, UTEP against the sensational freshman-led Chris uh, Jackson of LSU, that's UTEP and LSU coming your way at 11.30 on Friday night. Then, of course, next weekend, triple header action, both Saturday and Sunday, beginning at 12 Eastern time. The Pacific Coast joins us at 11 o'clock Pacific time. So there are 64 teams with a dream, their sights set on Seattle as we get set to embark on the road to the Final Four. The NCAA Tournament Selection Show has been sponsored by Pizza Hut, official corporate sponsor of the NCAA.